Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. Welcome to Bible Lanase Corner. We have been having a discussion talking about uh, the Holy Spirit giving people utterance. The Holy Spirit giving people utterance. God's implanted word in our heart saves souls. We've had uh, several discussions about the word of God that is saving. We had some conversation with one of our brethren, a Bible learner, and the Holy Spirit touching our hearts gave us some knowledge to see what was within the message that we shared. A Bible learner wrote a comment and I received a message, a comment from them uh, saying, my brother, may all the glory be to God Almighty for this enablement. May his saving word bring fruit to his kingdom. Amen. Thank you, Brother James Michael Anguini that you were touched by the Holy Spirit and when you decided to make a comment, may all the glory be to God Almighty for this enablement, may his saving word bring fruit to his kingdom. This was an inspiration and as we decided to see the embedded message within that statement may all the glory be to god almighty for this enablement may his saving word bring fruit to his kingdom here you can see some key words key phrases that you need to understand what the word of god talks about and uh, we decided to go through this statement getting the key words key phrases and these are the ones that we have been featuring we've had uh, several discussions talking about the word of god that is saving that saves souls, the word of God that's implanted in the hearts of men that can save souls. And here we see some key words, key phrases. God's saving word, saving souls, bringing forth fruit or bearing fruit to his kingdom or within his kingdom and enablement and also glory be to God Almighty. We've had several parts, messages shared by our brother James Michael Angwenyi. Children of the Most High God, the Master of the Universe, the Creator of heaven and earth and all that is there, the Father of our salvation, the Father of Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Allow me to address you on this platform to speak on the Word of God. The title today is The Saving Word of God. What is a saving word of God? First, 
We must know salvation is drawn from the word save. So what is salvation? To answer this question, we must bear in mind and in heart the biblical context. Generally, to save is to rescue, to preserve, to deliver from imminent danger, harm, ruin, or loss. But in the biblical realm, it means to deliver souls from the grip and control of Satan and the sin, from the self, and from the wrath of God on Judgment Day. To be saved, therefore, one must hear the gospel preached, one must believe in the truth contained in this gospel, and have faith that the main object of the gospel, who is Jesus Christ, indeed came to do what the gospel says. One has to do what the word says by exercising obedience, humbleness, and humility in a faithful display of righteousness and a good conduct among men to the glory of God. So what are we saying? That once a man accepts Jesus Christ as his Savior and the Lord of his life, gets baptized and becomes born again, and has heard the gospel, then he joins the ranks of the salvation-seeking souls. The gospel is the saving word of God when it is proclaimed in the spirit of the Great Commission, go out ye and make disciples of the nations, it becomes a saving word to those who hear, obey, and do as commanded. So in simple terms, salvation in true Christian religion is the deliverance of humankind from man's own enemy, the self, from the grip of and the dominion and the leadership of Satan, and consequently from the wrath of God and now and on judgment day. Salvation and eternal life being the sum total of Jesus' mission in his coming to humanity, we are hereby this saving word exhorted to obey, follow, and do according to the instruction and the principle of this saving word of God, which is confirmed by one verse in the Bible, which is almost the summary of the whole Bible, which is John 3, 16, which says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. This is the saving word of God that clearly guides us into the holy path of attaining the promised salvation through faith by divine grace. We must continue bowing down throughout our sojourney as aliens on this earth until that day when Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, will come to finalize our salvation and take us to the promised place in the Father's heavenly home. According to John 14, 3, which says, And if I go and I prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. So biblical salvation means to have a righteousness that is higher than that of the Pharisees and the scribes. That is when we will qualify to enter eternal life in the place promised and prepared by our Lord Jesus Christ. When we speak on the word of God, the saving word, we never speak human opinion, we never speak human wisdom, or anything of this lost and fallen world, but we speak of the holy word, the saving word, that he himself, in his sovereignty, inspired to be written by 40 men in a span of over 1,500 years. Yes, we have come to know this saving word is God breathed and the word inspired as recorded in scripture in the book of 2 Timothy 3.16, written down he as guided by the Holy Spirit in 2 Peter 1, verse 20 and 21. 
Holy Father, thank you for your saving word that we have spoken, Father. We have not spoken human wisdom. We have not spoken human opinion. We have spoken the word that you inspired. Father, may this saving word be our bread of life. Walk in it, live it, sleep it, Father, O oh God. Read, study, meditate upon it day and night in order to receive, Father, O oh God, the blessings that you have promised. Your book, the Bible, is full of promises. How we cling to those promises, Father, to receive from you as our Father, O oh God. You are a holy Father and a good Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Brother James. Michael and we may the Lord continue to keep you to protect you and we hope to hear more messages from you Holy Father in heaven may your name be hallowed may your kingdom come may your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven precious Lord in the name of Jesus, we come before you as your children. For you have said in John 14, 6, no one comes to you other than through Jesus. That is why, Father, we call you in the name of Jesus. We come to have life as instructed in your commanding, healing, and the saving word. As it is written in John 30, 30, that whoever believes in Jesus, your son, has eternal life. We have believed with our hearts and professed with our tongues our faith in you as commanded by your saving word in Romans 10.10. 10. Father, in the name of Jesus, may your commanding and the healing and the saving word snowball around the world and convict all your children to remain in you and bear fruit as you have commanded in your saving word in John 15 4. May we continue loving you and remain your confidence. May our concern and increased desire for continual soul winning be proof of our love for you in order for us to have full access to divine revelation and confidence and the fruitful application of your saving word by way of utterance to the world all your glory. Lord of glory, Teach us the experiences of life through your Holy Spirit because we trust that all our needs are hidden in you. King of kings, we humble ourselves before you in the spirit of your saving word in Matthew 7, chapter 7, verse 7 and 8. To ask, to seek, and knock. And that is what we are doing in humbleness and humility. Lord of Lords, strengthen us to pray all the time, never to restrain the Holy Spirit, not to despise the messages brought to us by your prophets, and be, oh God, be thankful in all circumstances. God of all wisdom, glory, and righteousness, empower us to live our lives grounded in your saving word, in faith, patience, love. Help us to love others without judgment, but with a solid foundation of acceptance for the sake of Christ Jesus' precious blood that washed our sins away. Gracious Father, we know you are so suffering that no one can interrogate or question or hinder or compel or stop the purposes for your creation. Father, we have understood that your silence is no license for us to turn away from you, but an invitation to press forward more diligently and walk in the light in salvation and eternity. Glory be to you because you are our strong tower to which we run for safety and bleed the blood of Jesus to be overcomers. Father, in the name of Jesus, Increase our faith in you so that we may sling stone our Goliaths to the dusty floor. Father, may your anointing flow from our lives and bring healing and deliverance and hope to others in the name of Jesus. Holy Father, may this prayer be a true and living sacrifice to you. May it be a divine shield to our souls and a bitter shame of defeat to the enemy. 
Father, these are the words that your grace has put in our lips and hearts. And as we give them utterance, as guided by the Holy Spirit, may they touch the world and shift its foundations to Jesus Christ, who is the strongest foundation that is dependable all the time. In Jesus' name, Father, we have prayed. Amen. Jesus has a way, he has a way in every way. Jesus has a way, he has a way in every way. Jesus has a way, he has a way for us all. Jesus has a way, he has a way for us all. In every circumstance, he has a way, he has a way. In every temptation, he has a way, he has a way. Jesus has a way, he has a way in every way. Jesus has a way, he has a way for us all. Thank you, Jesus. You have a way for us all. In every way, in every circumstance, you have a way. Thank you, Jesus. Children of God, in the name of Jesus, our Savior and Lord, blessings from the Lord be to you. I salute you in the name of Jesus. Here again, in the presence of our Creator, we meet to share his saving word through which he teaches us on how to bear fruit for his kingdom. Today, we are lucky to share briefly as guided by the Holy Spirit on the meaning of bearing fruit or bringing forth fruit to his kingdom. Welcome. Reference is here made on the book of John, chapter 15, verses 4 and 5 specifically. Welcome. First, we welcome our Father, our Creator, our Provider, our Protector and Defender into this meeting with His overwhelming presence so that we may understand on how to deal with this word that He has given us. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for our lives. Your saving word that has sustained us this far and all that has happened by your grace and unfailing love upon us all. May your saving word and your presence among us today pour down unto us your new masses for this day. All the glory be to you in Jesus' name. May the Holy Spirit give us strength and a divine utterance on these words as we walk on the narrow path of salvation in order to bear fruit according to your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Now then, what is meant by bearing fruit or bringing forth fruit? Let us read the scripture. John 15, verses 4 and 5. John 15, verses 4 and 5. And the Bible says, Remain united in me, and I will remain united to you. A branch cannot bear fruit by itself. It can do so only if it remains in the vine. In the same way, you cannot bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. 
Those who remain in me and I in them will bear much fruit, for you can do nothing without me. Basically, bearing fruit means to put effort in doing something and successfully producing good results. In biblical terms, it is the Christian's display of the outward actions that are dictated by the inward condition of their hearts. In sinful nature, the fruit born is wickedness, which does not give glory to God. But in righteousness, the fruit is faithfulness, total goodness that give glory to God and please Him. In John 15, 4 and 5, Jesus commands us to abide in Him to be able to bear favorable and acceptable fruit. What does that mean? Bearing fruit that will give glory to God is to abide in Christ Jesus in order to bear that good fruit. This is a commanded character of true Christian life that we must intentionally connect with our God through Christ Jesus to be able to produce the fruit which Christ cultivates in us. And as willing vessels, our fruit bearing is as a result of what the Lord does in us. For he has said in John 15, 5, that I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will bear much fruit, for you can do nothing without me. See, the Lord has said that there is nothing we can do without him. Without him, there is nothing we can do on our own. When we abide in him, the Holy Spirit sanctifies us to be like him and be able to bear much fruit in a good harvest to the Lord, to the kingdom. To be able to bear fruit, we are instructed to pursue righteousness, not in our own strength, but by the will of the Lord, and that is the best reason why we must cling and abide in him strongly to be able to bear fruit of eternal significance, a fruit that brings honor and glory to God. Without Christ, we are powerless. The saving word which we have to internalize in our hearts as our life teaches us that only by dwelling in our Savior Jesus Christ and His love, doing all that the word instructs us to do, faith free to the glory of God, will empower us to do all of eternal significance, therefrom things that are eternal, not natural, but spiritual things, things that are of God, things that glorify God. We are branches of the vine, and we cannot bear fruit on our own apart from depending on the same who is Jesus Christ, lest we miss production and get pruned and be thrown into the fire. That is to say, that life cannot flow through us if we are not connected to the source of life, who is Jesus Christ. For without Christ, there is no spiritual life. So in summary, we have understood that to remain faithful in Christ Jesus, having a zeal to win souls for the kingdom, doing things in holiness, righteousness, and faithfulness, while he's strongly attached to Jesus Christ in love, is the only way to bear fruit that gives him glory, adoration, worship, honor, praise, and thanks. Child of God, remain a true disciple of Christ Jesus. Abide in him and bear fruit in love, imitating Christ, the beginning and the finish of our salvation. He has given us the Holy Spirit to instruct us along the path of righteousness so that we may become true and blessed fruit bearers in Him. It is not just a prayer that God is moved by, but a fruitful life that we pray and abide in Him. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, 
strengthen us so that we may be able to to by your holy spirit have a legacy of fruitfulness which will cause you to answer our prayers in favor all the glory be to you in our fruitful lives adoration worship honor praise and love be unto you as you bless us all to have a fruitful life your saving word as it stands has come from you our duty is to obey and do as the word says lord make us fruitful for we have chosen to abide in you and bear fruit of eternal significance lord this word that we have shared among us as guided by the holy spirit has been drawn from john 15 verses 4 and 5 specifically bless all your children who have heard this word strengthen them father to internalize this word oh god father in the name of jesus help them father oh god lord of all glory you are the only one we depend on father for everything for you have instructed us father in your word in isaiah 45 verse 22 and we read let the whole world look to me for salvation for i am god there is no other father this is your holy word your saving word in instructing us father not to look to other gods of this world because the other gods of this world father oh god i nothing before you may we cling to you father for the promises you have given us in your entire book father may we keep this book in our hearts not in our shelves in our houses oh god strengthen us father to walk you in righteousness and receive oh god every knee will bend to you every tongue will declare allegiance to you who else father will we do this to there is none father oh god you are the most high god the supreme father the master of the universe and all that appears in this world seen and unseen all belong to you father receive your glory receive your honor receive your adoration father oh god in the name of jesus christ we have trusted and prayed amen Jesus has a way he has a way in every way Jesus has a way he has a way in every way Jesus has a way he has a way for us all Jesus has a way he has a way for us all in every circumstance he has a way he has a way In every temptation he has a way he has a way Jesus has a way he has a way in every way Jesus has a way he has a way for us all Thank you Jesus you have a way for us all in every way in every circumstance you have a way thank you Jesus The word of God is living and powerful God's implanted word that dwells in our hearts saves souls As we read in the book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 the bible says for the word of god is alive and active a sharper than a double edged sword it penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit joints 
and marrow. It judges the thoughts, intents, and attitudes of the heart. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. We see the word of God is God breathed. It has been given by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. According to Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. As Jesus said before ascending to heaven, he was going to send another helper, our teacher, the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit came, he was to convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. This is according to the book of John chapter 16 verse 8. Indeed, on that day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came, and he now dwells inside the hearts of those who have become born again, those who have been saved, having accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. People therefore need to become saved, to be saved from this perverse, corrupt generation. As we read in the book of Acts chapter 2, Peter said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. Those who hear the Lord's word, the word the Holy Spirit has implanted in their hearts, should believe in the word and be saved. As we read the book of James chapter 1, the gospel of mankind's salvation is being preached to the whole world according to the great commission given by the Lord Jesus Christ. This is recorded in the book of Matthew chapter 28. The gospel of salvation which has been preached to us which also we received and in which we stand by which also we are saved if we hold fast that word which was preached to us unless we believed in vain first corinthians chapter 15 Therefore, people should lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save our souls. James chapter 1 verses 21 to 25 We must be doers of the word, not only hearers, deceiving ourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man, observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. The book of James, chapter 1, verses 21 to 25. This is uh, a message that has been shared and uh, already published on the Bible Learners Corner podcast and it's available if you could listen to the message that has been shared by 
one of our precious friends, James Michael Anguini, and uh, we ask you if you have got a message that you would want to share, you can send it to us at Bible Learners Ministries and we will have it published. We hope those that will listen to that message with the guiding of the Holy Spirit, they will be blessed. We thank you for partnering with us and you got any message you can send it to us via Bible Learners Ministries at gmail.com. Children of God, what an incredible opportunity of faith that we meet once again in this platform. What a friend we have in Jesus. As we divulge down deep into evangelism in the ministry of Christianity, may we be made to realize that our faith has been strengthened to present the saving word, the gospel, to the lost in the world, and I bring them to conviction, repentance, and salvation. In the name of Jesus, we pray for strength, faith, and ability to reach the unsaved, and I bring them to the kingdom through the saving word as fruit into salvation, so that Christianity may be drawn into greater growth, maturity, through our focus, on the saving word of God, the gospel. May we run the race together, keeping the faith all the way to the outstretched arms of Christ Jesus, ready to receive us with the crown of salvation in his hands. Individually, collectively, locally, and globally, may we take this journey of faith with a deep desire and a commitment to the Great Commission that all creatures created in the image of God and likeness have been called. May we grow in faith and take the message of the saving word to the lost world so that it may receive the book of Acts atmosphere, the baptism by the Holy Spirit, Acts 2. Let our efforts in the journey of faith be an intentional strategy to win and disciple the world in salvation in the fruit-bearing endeavor. May the fruit-bearing effort be guided by the Holy Spirit in the journey of faith and be a fire lit, a fire of soul consciousness, a revolution of unbelievable revival to the lost souls in today's sin-sick world. In song number 66 in the Songs book, we are truly encouraged that we have a privilege to carry our sins and griefs to God in prayer. We are reminded that we forfeit the Lord's peace and undergo pain all because we do not carry our burdens to God in prayer. What a friend we have in Jesus Christ, who is always ready and faithful to receive our sorrows, our weaknesses as our refuge and a place of solace when our friends despise and forsake us. We thank Christ Jesus for us out stretching his righteous arms to receive and shield us from all the evil of the world and give us peace at all times in every way. In the pursuit of this peace by the faith he has imputed into us, may the Holy Spirit lead us not to be in error, but know the power in the saving world. Apply to the bare fruit by proclaiming this word to win the lost souls of the world. Back into the kingdom of God. Precious Lord, thank you for your guidance. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your saving word. 
that it makes our daily bread. We honor you. We magnify your name. We give you honor. We give you glory, adoration, and worship. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you once again, Father, to speak your word, your healing word, your saving word, the bread of life, our life. In Matthew 24, that 7 to 39, the word says, As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving to marriage up to the day when Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. People never obeyed until they perished. And even today, I just did the same. They allow the pleasures of the world to pull their minds away from the blessings of God. They do not want to accept the fact that these destructive pleasures they can be covered by the blood of Jesus. When we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and the Lord of our lives, our sins are covered by his blood. And when the Father looks at us, he sees the blood of Jesus, not our faults or sins, and he accepts us as his children. When we fail to see the fullness of the great work of the blood of Jesus, we give Satan an opening to dominate in our lives. And we forget that God's wisdom provides a way out of all this. He became the sin bearer so that we may become bearers of fruit and eternal life. He became sin for us to become righteousness. When we do not see him, discern him, obey him, we become weak, sickly, and we are subject to the attacks of the enemy. Our spiritual strength is eroded away. We must see Christ Jesus as the greater sacrifice for all our wickedness, the kind that caused Sodom and Gomorrah to be burned down. And as we look at him spiritually, let us see on his body our sins, our weaknesses, our failings, and all things that trouble us in this life. God's plan of redemption was to restore humanity to the total place of innocence and fellowship with him which Adam and Eve enjoyed in the Garden of Eden before sin came in. This means the work that God gave Jesus to do as a sacrifice for sin is complete. and We now can enter into the place of fellowship with God through his blood. Our Father who is in heaven, your holy name be magnified in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. God of all creation, we come before you in all humility with honest thanksgiving, and in all faith, we tender confession our sins before you and ask you for the gift of forgiveness in the name of Jesus. Father of all glory, give us your holy ear and hear our petitions. We have come to understand as guided and led by the Holy Spirit that you are a compassionate God, a prayer hearing God, a prayer answering God. In your omniscience, omnipotence, and omnipresence, you lovingly hear and our cries and give us good understanding of your commanding, saving, and healing word in order to have insight and revelation with effective and fruitful application of this word in our lives, other people's lives, and in your entire creation. All to your glory. In the name of Jesus, may your such light touch flow and glow ahead of us, and shine before us, and make us, O oh God, even the utterance of your word, your saving word, convincing to all the ears that you have lined up on the way of your Holy Spirit, to be brought to confession, conviction, repentance, and salvation. As we read in Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, you breathed out the saving word, and the perfectly superintendent human writers who used their own styles and personalities 
to record what your sovereign will wanted written down under the guidance and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Lord, you did not discriminate because you used men of all diverse backgrounds. And these include tax collectors like Matthew, prophets like Isaiah, priests like Ezra, fishermen like John, tent makers like Paul, shepherds like Moses, and physicians like Luke. This was your divine display of love and the justice to us. Dear Father, now in our various personalities, sample out our faith and use us to proclaim this saving word to the world. For you, as a loving God and a Father, do not desire that anyone you created after your own image and likeness perishes, but all should come to eternal life. Father, we pray that the Holy Spirit may give us utterance, prophetic utterance on your saving word, so that all hearers and the willing doers of your word may be brought into forgiveness, repentance, and salvation. In all this, O oh God, let your perfect and sovereign will manifest abundantly. In Jesus' name, amen. Now then, our discussion today is drawn from the saving word of God, and the topic is the message expressed in the statement, bearing fruit to all within the kingdom. In our discussion today, we are drawing from the saving word of God, and the topic is the message expressed in the statement, bearing fruit to all within his kingdom. First, bearing fruit involves what? It involves a repentant, born-again soul that desires to win souls into eternal life through proclaiming the saving word in faith and in love in Christ Jesus to the lost masses in the world. Let us first understand what this kingdom of God receives, that it receives fruit. The kingdom of God means it can be described in a Christian understanding as the spiritual realm over which God rules as king or the fulfillment of his sovereign will of God on earth. In this realm, God rules supreme, and Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, is the king. It is also called the kingdom of heaven or kingdom of light. This kingdom is an everlasting realm where God the Father is sovereign and Jesus rules forever. All teachings of Christ and the Bible revolve around this kingdom as the central theme where the authority of God is fully recognized and his will is obeyed. This kingdom is different from the other kingdom of national political territories. The kingdom of God is one of spiritual rule, reign, and sovereign control. In the Lord's Prayer, in the book of Matthew chapter 6, verses 10, the Bible says, May your kingdom come, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What does this exactly mean? It means a call for the spiritual kingdom of God to begin in our lives to convict us to obey the will of God. His word and the truth in the word that those who obey may enjoy the peace of God as the angels do in heaven. This means that we should desire to be aligned with the will and the purpose of God and then ask for heavenly empowerment to accomplish the will of God in our lives. This can further be stated that we are instructed to pray for heavenly spiritual blessings to come to us where we live here on earth so that as we obey and adore through obedience and faith, we may be rescued from the power of the dark world be forgiven and be brought into his kingdom, the spiritual realm. According to Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14, we are to be sanctified into Christ's rulership in the millennium coming as recorded further in the book of Revelation chapter 20. 
The kingdom we are to pray for in the Lord's Prayer is the same one that John the Baptist announced in his ministry as recorded in Matthew chapter 3, verse 2. And it says, Turn away from your sins, because the kingdom of heaven is near. This was the introduction of the kingdom of God in basic meaning. That the entry qualification into the spiritual realm of God, called the kingdom of God, was repentance, which is a change of one's heart from the attachment of the pleasures of the world, which is controlled by the enemy, Satan, to stop going the wrong way and start going the right way, to stop serving Satan and start serving God, to shun evil and to impress righteousness, a turning from sin to holiness, allowing Jesus' rule in our hearts by accepting him as our Savior and the Lord of our lives. Hallelujah. The key word, even as we call for the kingdom of God in our prayers, is repentance, which is a change of heart from sin and the world towards God, an inner change that bring in new and acceptable ways of living that exalt Christ and give evidence of the truth of the gospel, the revelation of Christ's wicked humanity. To go deeper, the kingdom of God is the rule of Christ Jesus on earth and the blessings and advantages that flow from under the rule of Christ. May God bless his saving word. May he bless and strengthen us to magnify his name as we receive the kingdom of heaven unto us. Glorious God, thank you for your saving word and the understanding you have given to us of your word. Now, Father, we pray that you commission your Holy Spirit to lead us. In Jesus' name, amen. James Michael Angwenyi. Our Father in heaven, God Almighty, we come before you in humble prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, the greatest teacher who ever lived and who, whenever he preached, used the method of declaring a principle, amplified it, and then illustrated it, and then declared the truth that set free all those in the bondage. Father, enable us to imitate Christ Jesus in our walk of Christianity to salvation and everlasting life. May you enable us, Father, to understand the truth of your saving word, practice it, and be set free in Christ Jesus. Amen. Children of God, in this session, as we proclaim the saving word of God to win souls, bear fruit, and bring harvest into the kingdom, we are going to look at what the word says about divine enablement. First, let us try to understand simply the English description of the word enablement. Enablement can mean to make able, to give power, means, competence, or ability to do something or to authorize. An example is language enables us to communicate with other people. But what is the biblical perspective of this enablement? Biblically, enablement is given by the grace of God and the Holy Spirit, where grace is a kind of reset button which resets our identity to become what God wants us to be in his mission. The call and the purpose of God in our lives it's impossible to fulfill without this enabling grace. It is the blessing of God upon us to be able to succeed. How do we get enabled to speak the healing and the saving word of God effectively? God, through his Holy Spirit, puts words in our mouths. And as we utter them in prayer and in proclamation, 
they become effective, causing noticeable changes to occur in the spiritual realm. And the Bible confirms this in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, verses 9. And the saving word says, Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. This is the kind of enablement we are talking about. God puts his word in our lips so that when we give it utterance, it becomes effective, changing things around. The blessing of God upon us, just as we are enabled by the power of God to have life and be active in doing all things, in a movement, as Christians are enabled to other words in a prayer that causes changes by the power of the Holy Spirit. The apostles were enabled to cast out the demons and to heal the sick and even raise the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. In 2 Timothy chapter 3.16, the Bible says, All scripture is breathed out by God and is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. Here we are told, God spoke or breathed out his word to help or enable those who teach, reprove, correct, and those who train on righteousness and the things of God to be effective in the purposes of God. In winning souls to the kingdom of God, Godly enablement is the spiritual empowerment of the servants of God to be successful in imparting the saving and healing truth to those they teach for righteousness. The Bible in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 13 says, And we impart these in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. This means the Holy Spirit enables the anointed servants to impart the spiritual truth to those who are willing to receive salvation. All those who desire to be enabled in the word and in goodness are exhorted to believe, have faith and trust in God. Joseph is an example who trusted in God and was enabled to scale the heights amidst the great trials and temptations to become the savior of the children of Israel in Egypt. It was Joseph's faith that brought cheer and comfort to Israel. So, enablement means the blessing of God upon his faithfuls to succeed in his purposes. Having faith in God Trusting him and believing in Christ Jesus are the key words that attract divine enablement. Children of God, now that we have understood that faith, belief, and trust in God attract his enablement upon us, may we remain in total and absolute dedication to these virtues. May God bless us all. Our Father in heaven, thank you for your enablement that we are alive today to serve you in the spirit and the truth and with our souls and win souls to the kingdom. Now, in the name of Jesus, we pray that your Holy Spirit may flow and bring many souls into the enablement, dispensation, and into everlasting life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We have seen God's implanted word in our heart saves souls. We've had the meaning of the saving word of God. And also we've had some message talking about producing fruits how the saved souls need to produce fruits, the fruits that God wants. 
someone has to be born again, someone has to be Christ-like, having the righteousness of God that is in Christ Jesus. By faith, someone having become born again and becoming justified as the righteousness of God by faith in Christ Jesus, they are able to bring forth fruit that God wants. They should be able to bear fruit that God wants. The good deeds, the good acts, the good words that God wants. Therefore, when someone has become born again, becoming the child of God, and they become the co-heirs of the kingdom of God, they are able to bring forth fruit that God wants. They should be able to bear fruit that God wants. The good deeds, the good acts, the good words that God wants. Becoming the child of God and by faith having become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, they need to produce deeds, they need to produce works, they need to produce acts. By faith having become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, because the Bible says faith without works is dead. Therefore, when someone by faith becoming justified to be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, they need to be like Christ. They need to be linked with Christ Jesus, who is the true vine, and Jesus Christ is the first fruit. Therefore, those that are saved, becoming united with Christ Jesus, they need to have the character of Christ Jesus. They need also to shine in glory the righteousness of God is leading someone to become shining in glory. And that is how mankind was created to be like at the beginning of time. But because of sin, all humanity fell short of the glory of God. And therefore, we need to lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, the word of God that can be implanted in our hearts, the word which is able to save our souls. As we read the book of James, chapter 1, verse 21, when someone becomes a doer of the word of God and not only a hearer, someone becoming a doer of the word and not only a hearer, they become saved and the word that is implanted in their heart will help someone to start bringing forth the fruits that God wants. And that is within the kingdom of God. They are producing deeds, the good deeds, the good works, the good acts within God's kingdom. And they become enabled to do so by the Holy Spirit, who is the author of the Word of God, because all Scripture has been given by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. All Scripture is God-breathed and 
it's been given to mankind and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And people, when they accept the word, they hear the word and obey the word, they are able to produce the good deeds with the guiding of the Holy Spirit who enables all that are willing to become saved. And as we have talked of the born again experience, people need to be born again. Every mankind, unless they become born again, they cannot enter the kingdom of God. This is something that Jesus said, whoever that needs to enter the kingdom of God, they must become born again, born of God, born of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the only one who can touch the hearts of men and can allow someone to move into the kingdom by faith in Christ Jesus. As we have said, going through the process of Jesus Christ, his death, his burial and resurrection, someone dying with Christ by faith. The mankind, the old sinful nature must die to give way to a new man in Christ Jesus, the saved person becomes a new man in Christ Jesus. Therefore, dying to self is to bear fruit that God wants. Dying to self, the old nature is no longer there, and someone having the new nature, the nature of Jesus Christ, having the newness of life, having the character of a new man that is bearing the character of Jesus the Christ, someone becoming Christ-like. They need to show the character that God wants. People need to show the character of saints, the saved people. People need to change in order to be changed. They come out of the kingdom of darkness and move into the kingdom of light. A changing in order to be saved, behaving like a Christian, becoming children of God, someone becoming born again. They become children of God. They become fruitful, bearing fruit that God wants. Therefore, this is dying to the Lord. People must give their life, surrender their life to the Lord Jesus Christ. They have to take up their cross and have their old nature crucified by faith in Christ Jesus, they become believers and having received the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal savior, someone needs to boast in the cross, the cross of Jesus Christ that has provided salvation to all humanity. People need to build a house, to build a house, spiritual house. Building a house on a rock, the rock foundation where Christ is the cornerstone. Building on a rock foundation and Christ is the cornerstone. 
people becoming disciples of Jesus Christ, followers of Christ Jesus, dying to self, people dying self as a grain of wheat, they must die so as to bear fruits of good works, good deeds, good acts that God wants. That's why we need to understand this uh, born again experience that someone needs to go through and to become saved, to become children of God, becoming co-heirs of the kingdom of God, and also bearing fruit that God wants. We have shared so many messages and we hope with the guiding of the Holy Spirit someone should be able to understand what they are hearing. We will be back shortly to continue talking more about a, a discussion. We have shared so many messages and we hope with the guiding of the Holy Spirit, someone should be able to understand what they are hearing. The messages that are being shared through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Someone giving utterance. The Bible talks of the utterance as we read in the book of uh, Acts and several other scriptures, we see when the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost, as we read in the book of Acts chapter 2, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. These were the disciples that Jesus told them to go and wait for the coming of the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus promised the coming of the Holy Spirit. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. This is in verse 4, as the Spirit gave them utterance. We thank you, Brother James Anguini, for sharing this enlightening message we ask you to continue with the discussion God's implanted word in our hearts saves souls. God's implanted word in our heart saves souls. God's saving word bringing forth fruit the saved can produce Fruits that God wants, the deeds, the acts that God wants. And the born again, they are children of God. They have entered God's kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of light. The children of the kingdom of God, as they produce the fruits that God wants, shining in glory, they will continue to shine more and more in God's glory. Shining in glory, as they walk in the light, they start shining, shining in glory. We will be back to talk more 
about the word of God that is implanted in our hearts, the word that saves souls. The word of God, the saving word that brings forth fruit through the word of God, the born again children becoming led, becoming guided by the author of the word of God, the Holy Spirit, they will bear the fruits in God's kingdom, the fruit of righteousness, the fruit that God wants, the acts that God wants, the deeds that God wants, the fruit of righteousness, as all scripture has been given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Second Timothy chapter 3 verses 16 and 17. We will be back shortly to continue talking more about the discussion. Stay blessed and shalom.